Okay, welcome to the Crow Discovery Project, and this clip is going to be about new equipment because I am finally back to 100% following the Mead fiasco. Uh, for all you out there who have been asking about new scopes, check out Celestron. Um, it is like night and day. So yeah, if you're going to look at scopes, I suggest among the scopes you look at should be Celestron. So as I set up, uh, I was getting my lighting dialed in with the new equipment. The seeing was terrible last night, and this is way overexposed, but it's an interesting image, so I figured I'd, I'd show it to you. Here comes a better version. So the seeing between 1 and 10 was about a 5. It was horrible. They'd been chemtrailing all day. You couldn't get a perfect focus, but from this image, you can see, again, the optics are going to be mind-blowing. They're staggeringly good, maybe even slightly better. Uh, as Celestron does the optics slightly differently than Mead does. Mead does it totally with a corrector plate. And another thing is I noticed the color is back where it needs to be, and I'll be improving that. Uh, with the Mead system, there was a lot of gold for some reason that kept creeping into all the moon footage, and it was almost impossible to get rid of. And I, I suspect it has to do with the coatings that are on the, uh, the rear corrector plate there. So what I'm going to do is load a clip real clip quick here and run it at 700% so you can see just how bad the seeing was this night. Uh, all this junk was blowing in from over the ocean. As I have stated, they were chemtrailing all day, and you'll see this black powdery stuff uh, blow in front of the moon here in a second, which even when that is not in your direct line of sight, it kind of kills your ability to focus. It gives you a very wavy, turbulent look, and you just you can't get a perfect focus no matter what you do. So there's an object going across the bottom. That was almost certainly a bird. The next two clips are going to show objects. The next one's going to come from the right bottom up to the right top. I don't do a lot of work on these because they're not very interesting. Um, but probably uh, that's a satellite in this one. And in the next clip that's going to load up in a second, it's going to go from the left top to the right top, all the way up top. Here it comes. And there he goes by. That one may be a bird. And again, unless they're interesting objects at this point, I'm just not going to spend the time to do the work. Um, it, it takes too much effort. So now we're going to get into the sun, and I'm going to start by loading up. As soon as I kicked the GPS on in the new scope, this is what happened. Listen. So that is a helicopter buzzing us really close and really low. So what I have done is I have disabled the GPS on this scope and will no longer use it. So what you're looking at here is the solar disk with a typical solar filter where you just get to see sunspots. Now I'm going to load up a new view and show you how much better we're about to get. This is as I'm dialing in uh, the blocking filters, uh, H-alpha, or hy hydrogen alpha filters. This one is way overexposed, but you can see the flames coming off the limb called prominence. And uh, this next image that I load, you'll see that I'm starting to dial it in. In this next image, look at the outer limb, and you will see little flaming things shooting off the surface, the prominence. The problem we're having here is when I got the system, we were pretty sure that the sensor and the camera needed to be further away from the blocking filter, which was actually wrong. It needed to be closer, and I could not get focus. So what I did was I used lenses to get what I'm showing you here. Um, let's just suffice it to say that in a couple weeks, it's going to get much better. So when I dial in to look at the prominence, and this prominence is nowhere near in focus as much as it should be, but it is a very cool view. Um, this is not something you get to see every day. And these things can happen in minutes, hours, days. Um, it just depends. So as we film these things, we should get some very interesting things. And who knows, maybe we'll get lucky and get a, you know, an X-class solar flare at some point. But there's a balance you can do, and in the next clips, I'm going to go 50-50 so that you can partially see the surface detail and the solar prominence out at the limb. The surface detail uh, can be a lot more defined than it is here, and as I get the system dialed in, you'll get a lot more detail. It almost looks like the, like the detail on the surface of an orange, in a way, uh, mixed with looking into a furnace. That's the kind of look it has. So in this 50-50 view, you'll see 
slightly the surface detail which I will bring up with editing manipulation and you can see the prominence on the outside is not as distinct as it was a minute ago. The surprising thing is, is it requires actually a different focus. So if you want to see the surface detail, it's one focus. If you want to see the prominence, it's another focus and it also involves positioning uh, your blocking filters. So in a second here I'm going to load up an even better view to see surface detail and then invert color channels to bring up the contrast and all these types of things. So hold on for a second here. Here comes the next next image. So what I've done is inverted the color channel here. The prominences are not very visible but you can very well see the surface detail here which will get a lot better as I get the system working better. And in a second here I'll add a find edge filter which will add some motion into the surface detail inside the solar disk and that's what this is and you can kinda see where the sunspots are um, that I showed you in the first view and the cool thing about using the first view is uh, for those of you who watch the solar eclipse you can get UFOs going by or satellites or all kinds of things now in this view what I did was is I went for surface detail uh, more than prominence so the prominence is slightly out of focus and you, you're starting to lose the visibility of the prominence and uh, the surface detail is just very an interesting thing and as I get it dialed in and get the contrast up on it it'll be a very cool thing to watch so we're gonna have three times uh, the amount of views that we used to have on the Sun and uh, as those of you who follow me know, there is always something up in the sky. Uh, Croet hollered at me and said, hey, there's something interesting out here. We ran out and saw this thing. Uh, it looked very metallic, and it was just strange, going up really quick and going west really quick, shiny. And I thought, well, is this Mylar balloons? Um, so I ran in, grabbed the telephoto to get up closer on it, and um, I'll show you that video here in a second. So here's the video, and all the motion you're seeing is camera motion. I'm trying to get the telephoto on it, but it is indeed traveling up and west or towards me very quickly. And I'll zoom in and slow this, uh, this clip down to 30% so that you can get a better view. I think that's about three or 400% uh, zoom. And uh, I'm calling them balloons. As much as we want them to be something cool, <laughs> I think we're just looking at a very strange bunch of balloons in a net or something. Uh, when I first saw them they looked like a helix all twisted together and moving up quicker than you'd expect. Moving on. So let's follow Crow around the world and my buddy Matthew in the UK who I believe is a doctor, I hope I have that right Matthew, sent this image. Funny thing behind him, <laughs> goes out of frame proof that's the wave clip. I've said that so many times in my life I never want to have to say it again. And I have another image here from Matthew. And I guess if you're going to view uh, lunar UFOs, that is the way to do it. That's a pretty good view. That's a nice TV. So I've noticed a lot of t-shirts have sold. So send me the images and I'll get you in my clips. There it is. Cheers.